Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining, uh, joining us here. Um, as uh, Christina mentioned, my name is Scott Ingram. I'm with uh, Norco Medical. I'm actually uh, in Boise, uh, based out of Boise, but um, I, I am the director of the division and we do have locations out in uh, uh, Portland and uh, Bend and Klamath Falls. But uh, anyway, without further ado, I'll, uh, I'll uh, share my screen here and uh, bear with me. I'm still getting used to all this new technology as well. And so uh, plan on a, uh, a couple glitches, I am sure. That is, there we go. So I am assuming you all can see my presentation here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. We've just got a quick uh, couple, a bit of introduction about Norco. I'm Scott from Norco Medical, and we want to let you know we are here to support you as your mobility and respiratory needs change. The goal of all our certified respiratory therapists and mobility specialists is to keep you safe, independent, comfortable, and to serve you better. So this presentation's on mobility um, and some of the key uh, focuses are uh, safe mobility, uh, timely and um, maintaining your independence. Uh, just again, a quick inter, uh, you know, I'm an ATP, I've been an ATP for 15 years. Uh, I've worked on the manufacturing side. I've been with uh, three uh, medical providers now. A little bit about Norco, we're a, fi a family uh, owned and um, employee owned company uh, based in the Northwest in I believe six states. We have 45 uh, medical locations and we do uh, respiratory and, uh, and mobility equipment. Getting right into the uh, presentation, um, durable medical equipment uh, is referred to as DME. Uh, DME includes uh, ambulatory and rolling aids such as canes, crutches, walkers, uh, wheelchairs being manual wheelchairs and uh, power wheelchairs, um, scooters, CPAP, uh, most medical devices uh, fall in the category of DME or durable medical equipment. Um, canes are typically a uh, product that um, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of folks with ALS will start with uh, to, you know, to help with mobility and safety. Um, the single point cane is typically recommended, but obviously these recommendations are going to come from a physical or an occupational therapist. Uh, it assists with the balance and is useful if you have enough hand strength to grip it. Uh, if one or both legs or legs are weak, you'll want to hold the cane in the opposite uh, hand of the weakest leg. Not a lot of us think about, but when it uh, when you are using the cane, you want to use it in your uh, the opposite of your weakest uh, leg. Forearm crutches are another um, tool that uh, can be used to maintain safe uh, and um, safe and uh, independent mobility. Uh, they're forearm crutches. They're also known as uh, Canadian crutches or loft strand crutches. And they provide the ability support because of the ability to bear weight on the forearm and the hand. And they assist with balance and endurance and uh, are, are quite helpful um, when you're trying to ambulate with spasticity. Walkers are another, um, you know, uh, as, as the disease progresses, walkers are another piece of equipment that a lot of patients will use. Typically, the four large, uh, you know, the, the walkers with the four large swivel wheels and hand brakes uh, are typically uh, what we, you know, see a lot of patients using. There are, of course, up in the top left of your screen, um, just your standard typical walker, but you have to lift that one up in order to advance forward or push with an extreme amount of force uh, with the front wheeled walker. And then obviously the, um, the uh, typical four wheeled walker here, these have baskets and seats that you can sit on 
if you are using a four-wheeled walker and you are going to sit down, I will caution you along with, I'm sure, anybody else and therapists to make sure you apply the brakes before you sit down in that seat for safety. Uh, otherwise, uh, it probably will roll out from under you. Um, if, if a, a walker becomes, um, you know, uh, dangerous for use, uh, you know, you're not safe with it, uh, then we start looking at uh, wheelchairs and there's different levels of manual wheelchairs. There's what we call a transport chair up in the top left, which is a real basic type manual wheelchair. You can typically buy this uh, at Walmart, Amazon. Um, then you've got your basic manual wheelchair which is again, real basic, typically what you see in a doctor's office setting. Again, those can be uh, you know, bought at either a DME store or um, Amazon, uh, Walmart, uh, you know, any, any sort, uh, any of those types of uh, retailers. After that, you get into a manual tilt in space wheelchair or manual recline chair. And that's uh, this chair over here to the left, the orange one. It um, is designed for pressure relieving and, uh, and to prevent sliding out of the wheelchair. It's manual and you can push some levers and tilt it. And we'll kind of go through what tilt and recline is here a little later in the presentation, but this is a manual wheelchair. It's a very custom level wheelchair, custom cushion, custom backrest. And then there's um, custom manual wheelchairs as well. So to give you the, an idea of the customizability, the wheelchair that uh, you see up in the top right, that particular chair is, you know, uh, a couple check boxes on, an, on a one page order form. Down below here, when we're designing this manual wheelchair, it, they tend to be about 10 pages long and 15 to 20 um, different uh, adjustments and measurements that we can customize that chair for. The uh, custom manual wheelchair too also tends to be about 10 pounds lighter than the standard manual wheelchair that you can get. If uh, independence uh, becomes difficulty in a power wheelchair, then we can start to look at uh, power mobility. And you've got your scooter and your basic power wheelchair off here to the right. Um, it might work for a little while, but um, you know, as the disease progresses, this type of basic power mobility uh, is not gonna, you know, it's not gonna be appropriate uh, as, you know, as the disease progresses. And unfortunately, ALS, we don't know how fast it's going to progress. Uh, you know, everybody's different. So typically, uh, we, we don't look at providing this type of equipment, but I just want you to know that it is available. Um, and Jazzy is one of the common names that you'll hear uh, as far as the manufacturers go for these uh, scooters and the power wheelchairs. Typically uh, for the ALS diagnosis, we, um, we are looking at custom power mobility. Uh, these systems consist of the drive wheels, the base and batteries. Uh, we, we try to consider um, current need uh, and future need as well. And, and some of the common seat functions that you'll uh, see uh, on a power wheelchair are going to be power tilt, power recline, power elevating and articulating foot plates, uh, pressure, uh, you know, these all provide pressure relief. Uh, there's different cushions and different backrests that we can provide, different headrests, and all sorts of electronics and drive controls that we can um, add to this higher level of power wheelchair. <clears throat> the power wheelchair base, uh, there are two common base options uh, or drive options. There's what we call a front wheel drive chair which you can see uh, on the picture to the left where this big wheel is at the front of the chair and, uh, and it is you know, doing the driving. It's got the motors attached to it and stuff. Uh, I find these to be the best performing outdoors um, going up curb cuts and steep uh, inclines. 
The other drive configuration is the mid wheel drive, which is off to the right and with the yellow wheel there. And that you'll see there's six wheels on the ground and the big wheel with the motors being in the middle and that being the drive wheel. Uh, this tends to have a tighter turning radius than the front wheel does just based on where that uh, those wheels are tends to or can be a little bit rougher of a ride because you've got six points of contact on the ground versus four points of contact on the ground. So when you're going over bumps and curb cuts and stuff outdoors or thresholds in your home, um, again, you've got uh, extra points of contact with the ground and that bump. Midwheel drive tends to be the best, uh, you know, the best performance in uh, in tight turn situations. Um, of course, when we are, uh, you know, looking at these options, the ATP will discuss your home environment with you. Typically, what you let, you know, what your uh, activities are, both indoors and outdoors, and even bring a demo chair over to your house for you to try, uh, so that you can make the best decision for you. Uh, on what the best drive terrain uh, will be. All sorts of different uh, cushions and positioning hardware as well. So if um, your trunk begins to get weak, we can add, uh, or your legs, we can add different um, supports. This particular backrest here on the left has uh, lateral trunk support. We can add pads down uh, near the seat cushion and the seat base so that uh, we can support your legs. There's also different neck and head supports. There's all sorts of different cushions available that are made of foam, uh, you know, foam and gel, uh, foam and air, air, all sorts of different combinations of equipment um, and, and components that we can uh, add to the chair to help provide the most, uh, you know, the most pressure relief and the most uh, uh, independent mobility. As the disease progresses, there's also different drive controls um, to give you continued independence. So, uh, you know, typically the wheelchair comes with the standard joystick that you see over here on the left. Uh, as you know, as it progresses, potentially this joystick becomes difficult to use, difficult to push the joystick forward, backwards. With the uh, custom level of the power wheelchair and the advanced electronics, we can change how this, you know, just the standard joystick works. Uh, you know, for instance, if you have to push it an inch forward to get it to go full speed, we can program that so you might only have to push it a quarter of an inch to a half an inch and it will go full speed. Uh, other, um, you know, options or um, different drive controls include sip and puff. It's not something that we typically use with ALS patients because of, uh, you know, respiratory complications that may, uh, that may uh, present. Um, there's a head array options, which basically this takes the place of your headrest on your wheelchair and there's switches built into these pads that would allow you to look to the left or to the right and make contact with these pads and cause the chair to drive. The back pad has your forward and backward control in there. Um, but again, you know, it's one of those things, everybody's different. And so we, um, you know, so we evaluate these as we need to. These can all be added to the chair uh, down the road. Um, there's the bib harness, which is this mini joystick here. Uh, this device is designed to fit around your neck, behind your neck, and then you can drive with the chin, with your chin. Uh, with this joystick and this joystick you can almost just blow it and it will push the joystick forward so it doesn't take a lot of force but this joystick can be positioned like i said at your chin um, this has a little cork ball on it i've had uh, i've worked with als patients that have driven with their tongue we can position that right up outside of the mouth um, I've also used this joystick uh, at the end of an armrest. So if you only have, you know, if you have minimal movement with a, a finger, a pinky or a index finger, we can position this so that you, you know, just minimal movements will allow you to continue, uh, you know, driving your chair. 
Some of the latest advancements are this IR, the eye gaze system. The eye gaze system is a uh, system that mounts on your chair and um, without having to touch anything, make any contact, if you look where you want to go, um, essentially the chair will drive forward, backwards, left and right. There's a set of cameras on the chair that, uh, that you train to follow your eyes and that will allow you to drive your wheelchair as well as operate all the seat functions too. Some of the optional items are a uh, power seat elevator, which will allow the chair to go up and down. These typically raise up, uh, you know, anywhere from 12 to 14 inches, depending on the manufacturer. They aren't covered typically by your insurance, but there's foundations like the uh, Team Gleason that will help with um, funding the seat elevators. Uh, and, and elevation tends to assist with transferring and uh, uh, other activities of daily living, getting up to get stuff out of a cupboard, off a counter, in the freezer. Um, there's, you know, vent holders, uh, cup holders, light packages, and there's, um, you know, some of the newer chairs actually have this built in, but you can uh, use your joystick or your drive control on the chair to operate the mouse on your uh, computer uh, or your speech device. You can use uh, infrared to control your TV and stereo on some of these devices and open doors and stuff. So, um, so the, the equipment has definitely come a long way. It's a lot more than just a mobility device. It, uh, you know, it will help give you accessibility and independence to a lot more, um, you know, things throughout your home. Couple things to note, the average weight of a chair is 350 pounds without, uh, without you in it. Um, MSRP's, you know, $25,000. The insurance doesn't pay this amount though. They have uh, set allowables and contracts with the DME providers. And um, if, you know, typically there is an out of pocket unless there is a secondary uh, insurance and, um, and then, uh, you know, we're able to offer some different pricing on some of these different options as well. My best recommendation on when to consider uh, power mobility uh, and custom power mobility is when you start to see your lifestyle, uh, when you start to feel like your lifestyle is changing or you're limiting your social interactions with your family and friends uh, and getting around, you know, you're having issues getting around the house. Uh, you're having falls or you're having increased onset early on. Um, but my recommendation is that we typically want to start this program soon or, you know, start getting the equipment for you sooner uh, than later. Um, almost want to start before you absolutely need it so that you can get used to the equipment um, while, uh, you know, uh, and, and know how it drives and even use it to get out of the house and go for strolls around the block and stuff. Um, benefits of custom are obviously uh, safety, comfort, independence, um, they reduce fatigue and uh, prevents injuries, uh, you know, from falls and stuff and skin breakdown. There are, uh, there is uh, loaner closets available through the ALSA. Um, and uh, all, a lot of that equipment is donated from um, previous uh, patients with ALS. Uh, you know, it, it can be, you know, used if you don't have uh, insurance, um, if, you, you know, a copay becomes difficult, uh, or if you need a loaner chair while you're waiting for a custom uh, wheelchair, or, um, you know, uh, typically a new chair that's your own is the best option. But if there is one that would work for you in the loan closet, too, that is always a good option. But you do want something that's going to fit uh, you and something that we can modify and adapt and, uh, and get you the equipment that you need. Uh, the process, uh, essentially, um, if you're attending a clinic, a therapist will usually recommend um, that it might be time to start, uh, you know, looking or considering the equipment. Um, and the therapist will contact your DME provider, uh, who you choose, and um, 
and you know, uh, basically bring us in and we'll do an evaluation. Your doctor has to uh, do some notes and that usually happens at the clinic as well. Uh, part of the evaluation um, would be the ATP, the therapist and yourself. Uh, to again, as I mentioned earlier, discuss your needs and wants and lifestyle and try to make the best, um, you know, determine what the best equipment is that's going to suit your needs and, and keep you safe and independent. Uh, as I mentioned too, we can always bring some demos out uh, for you to trial and look at in your home and make sure they're going to work for you. And the ATPs will actually come out to your house as part of it, uh, as part of um the uh sorry here uh, let me send this to voicemail um as uh you know as part of um uh the evaluation to determine what the uh you know determine what's also going to work and at times we can make some different recommendations for other equipment and considerations in your home the therapist, after we meet, will write a letter of medical necessity to justify all the equipment, and that goes to Norco. Uh, we kind of go back and forth with your doctor, get some paperwork signed, and then we submit it to your insurance company. The process is anywhere from 45 to 90 days, typically. We do our best to shorten that up. Um, just because we know how um, ALS progresses. And once the equipment is decided, uh, Norco um, and other DMEs tend to order uh, the equipment after we have the letter of medical necessity from your therapist so that we can get it here uh, right away for you. Um, so, you know, like I said, 45 to 90 days, um, we typically, like I said, can get it here a little bit quicker uh, once we get the authorization. I will mention though, with the team Gleason and the seat elevator, they require us to get a denial uh, on that seat elevator from the insurance prior to us ordering the chair. So um, that can add a couple extra weeks uh, between us ordering the chair uh, and, and stuff, but, um, but those funds definitely and the seat elevator are definitely beneficial. Um, Norco uh, ATPs, um, we have several uh, throughout the area and stuff. Uh, in Bend, we have two, uh, Chris uh, Lathrop and uh, Kyle Eager. And then over in Portland, we have uh, Tim Perkins. Um, just looking, I know we're getting lower on time here, so, and um, just, uh, I guess, before we move on to kind of the product demonstration, um, I'll stop and ask if there's any, uh, any questions uh, at this point in time. And on the left, you'll see uh, all of uh, the ATPs uh, in that area, as well as our email addresses, too, and then our location information in Oregon is down there towards the bottom. 